Hello and welcome to the second in a two-part series covering vector deployment in AWS. In the first episode, what we completed was a successful deployment of the vector brain within a single VPC with two subnets. In this episode, what we're going to cover is basic configuration of the brain to allow connection and deployment of a new uh, network sensor that will be deployed within AWS once again to capture network traffic from various uh, EC2 sensors. So how do we do that? As you can see here, we have our successful deployment of our brain. So we just need to prepare it to accept the registration of a new sensor. So to do that, we'll first go to settings. And what I would uh, encourage you to do is uh, complete uh, the uh, the basic settings like DNS entries, uh, time server entries, so on and so forth before commencement. But we'll forego that uh, for the purpose of this particular uh, session and we'll go come down straight to sensors. So within the sensors, what we want to do is just make sure that when we do deploy a sensor, we want to turn on virtual sensor automatic pairing, but also we want to generate a new token. So in doing that, we'll quickly click save. And what we'll do at the same time is generate a new token for us. So as you can see there, there is a time lim limit to these registration tokens. You can generate as many as you wish, and they're valid for 24 hours. After that, the registration code will become null and void, and you basically put the simple process just uh, generate new tokens. So I'm just going to copy that and paste that uh, into my notepad for future reference when it comes to deployment of the brain. So that is the brain prepared for uh, the deployment of the sensor. So when you do that, let's come back uh, to AWS. And then from here, we want to come through to uh, deployment of uh, said sensor so for that we can find the sensors within the marketplace so we come to marketplace subscriptions and if you don't already basically you'll uh, add uh, your subscription uh, of, of said uh, uh, sensor so but do a simple search of discover products and uh, type in Vectra and you'll see various products relating to Vectra services and of which we want the Vectra sensor, as you can see right here. So let's launch the CloudFormation stack relating to the, to the sensor. So with that, it's just telling us what we actually require. So this is the version. There should only be a couple of versions there, but pick the, uh, the latest one that's available to us and in the region. Very important, also we want to match the region that we've deployed um, our brain uh, into. So in our case, it's US West 2 in Oregon. So we'll select that, and then we'll continue to launch. Okay, we want to launch the cloud formation of said sensor, and we'll launch. Then present us with the cloud formation template that will be launched, we're okay with that. Click next, and then uh, the uh, cloud formation page, to which we just then just fill out this page, which will then give us the parameters required that we want for the brain uh, for the sensor deployment. So let's uh, demo sensor. Okay. That's absolutely fine. Now you want the brain IP. This will be the internal IP address of the brain. So although we have a public IP address, we want the internal. Now if we go back to the brain, it actually tells us what that is. So in this particular case, 10.0.0.25. So we go back to our stack form. There we go, and put that there. Which size of sensor do we require? So I'm going to just a little bit larger than large. And 
With the sensor, we have two interfaces. One for management, which will communicate with the brain, so that's registration, that's also sending the, uh, the traffic metadata to the brain. But then we also have uh, ETH on ETH0, the traffic capture interface. So this is where the AWS subsystem will send that captured traffic. So we wanna make sure that we get this correct. Any issues that occur will pretty much occur right here. So for the management VPC, right, so we'll just uh, search them in demo, chart VPC, and the subnet that the brain is in is uh, in the public subnet. So see here, uh, there we go. And then if we come down to the traffic subnet, or the traffic group, we can do it from here. So we want the traffic VPC. Again, so that's the demo general VPC, but the subnet, it is going to be the private of the demo JR VPC. We have the SSH key. Now, this is the same one we use for the brain, but you can configure um, other uh, uh, SSH keys. Um, it's totally down to you. And then what we require then is the registration token that we got from the brain within the registration token here. So I will just paste that in right there. Now, what you can do is have a bank of vector sensors behind a single load balancer. And we have other tutorials in configuring um, of a load balancer to sit in front. So go ahead, click those after we've de uh, deployed this particular sensor. And basically we'll just instruct you how to deploy um, that load balancer and then uh, the configurations that are required uh, should you want that particular scenario. But also bearing in mind there is a limitation within AWS when it comes to traffic mirroring in that you can only mirror 10 EC2 instances for traffic, okay? If you have a load balancer, that then becomes unlimited. So if you have more than two EC2 instances you wish to monitor, you will require a network load balancer uh, in place. But that can always be set up afterwards. It literally takes just a few, few minutes. So this looks uh, correct to me. So in fact, we will need a stack name. So I'll just make a copy and paste of uh, the same details there. Okay, we're happy with that. So we'll click next. Do you wish to have any other additional tags? Not in this case. And again, just review and we'll create that stack. And off it goes. So in typically just a couple of minutes uh, to configure these. So in the last tutorial, the brain took, well, it can take up to two minutes, but in that particular case, I think it took only uh, about sort of 45 seconds or so. So just a few more processes for uh, the sensor to go through, but already it's, uh, it's completed a few of those. So we'll wait and see full uh, deployment before we then start um, the configuration. So it's almost there. I think we're waiting just for five. There we go. So again, not too long, and under a minute. So we have our uh, sensor that's uh, deployed there, uh, management interface and traffic interface and the various traffic groups as well. So let's configure those traffic groups right now, purely because we don't want to forget any of this uh, uh, information. So let's go to the resources. We can see the resources there that have been uh, configured. So what we want to change basically is the security groups for both the management and the traffic. First of all, let's deal with the management. So as I said, this is management. This is the communication between the sensor and the brain. So we'll just uh, open that in a new tab. And we want to modify the inbound rules um, of this particular sensor or EC2 instance. So there is nothing there right now. So we want to edit those rules and add basically two more. 
So what we want is uh, SSH and HTTPS, just like the brain. Okay. Now, in optics case, we'll say from anywhere, but typically you'll limit it to the uh, the, the the brain uh, IP address. It's always a smart move, and we'll save those rules. Within AWS, the outbound rules is uh, anything is allowed um, outbound, so it can always get to, to the brain. If you wish, you can lock that down, so it only then communicates uh, with the brain, but you can leave it um, as is. But the inbound rules, very important that we have the HTTPS and SSH ports open um, so that communication can then occur. Okay. If we then come back to the, uh, the traffic security group and modify that. So this is the AWS subsystem um, taking a copy of the monitor traffic and then passing it to this interface. And AWS will do that over VXLAN. So let's go through and configure uh, that correctly. So that will be an inbound rule. We'll edit that inbound rule and it's going to be a custom UDP port. Okay. And that port is 4789. Custom UDP port 4789 from anywhere. Okay. So that's from any E and I that you wish to capture the traffic from. Okay. Now, if you just want to capture from a particular subnet, yes, then you can place um, a particular um, uh, subnet in that field. But in this case, you want to just capture from anywhere. Anything that you that AWS wants to send to this interface, we will accept um, as long as it's on uh, coming across uh, the VXLAN um, protocol. Um, we'll save that rule. Okay, so we now have a, a configured sensor. So just make sure that the sensor is uh, available and up and running. Oh, let's, so we come back here, so we have the, uh, the instance. Just want to monitor to make sure that's all happy. Okay, so it says it's running and there are no alarms. Okay, now from here, there is one additional configuration we need to make. Now, this is only particular in this but in this scenario. But what we'd actually done within our brain communication is only accept ports HTTPS and SSH from my public IP address. What we also need to do is uh, configure the security group so that the sensor can also communicate with um, uh, the brain as well. So let's configure that. So we go to our EC2 dashboard and our uh, EC2 instances. Let's filter out on demo. We can see the brain right there. So we go to probably the networking is what we want. Okay. Oh. And we see the interface right there that we require. S scroll across to the uh, security groups, and it's this we wish to enter or edit. Inbound. So we want to modify this, and as you can see there. So at the moment, the sensor is trying to communicate um, with the uh, uh, with the brain, but it can't because there's only there's only one um, entry. There. So what we'll need to do is uh, add in addition the uh, IP addresses uh, or IP address of said private interface of the sensor. So let's uh, uh, locate that. Okay, so let's that security group. Let's go to instances. Probably be a little bit easier. Uh, look for demo, want the sensor instance, 
and here we go. In fact, what we want is the private. So which one is set to the, well, the private, which is the management. So it's the top entry there. And it has this, inter this IP address. So back to our brain or brain security group. And we'll make that a slash 32 there. If we want to, let's start that process again. Edit. If we want to do is add in additional rule. There we go. Let's just do it this way. Slash 32 on. SSH and we'll do the same for HTTPS. Okay, so we're only allowing in from the sensor and uh, my public IP address and we'll save that rule. Set up policy change, and then what we can do is uh, double check that configuration by coming back to our brain. If we go to manage, we will then have a uh, sensor or sensors tab, and then in a few moments, that sensor will appear once it's had uh, time to register uh, for the brain. So, what we'll do is we'll leave that for a few moments. And then you'll rejoin me uh, once that process has uh, been complete. Welcome back. You rejoin me literally probably two minutes later. And we can see there that the brain is in fact uh, registered itself, well, the sensor has registered itself with the brain and is now pairing. If we expand, basically gives us uh, details around the brain uh, itself, you need unique identification, the version that it's on. Now, the, 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 the sensor during the registration process, it will also pull down any updates from the brain. So the brain will communicate with Vectra to pull down any updates for itself and for any sensors that it may be managing. And then the sensors will connect to the brain to then pull down their relative updates. So the sensor itself uh, never needs to connect uh, to uh, the, the public internet uh, for anything. So that is basically sensor deployment and configuration of the various uh, security groups. So if you want to find out how to um, configure the host name uh, integration, uh, integrations for CloudWatch and so forth, we have uh, specific videos about five minutes long in duration for each of those processes. So uh, go ahead and indulge yourself in which we'll be able to provide you with the full configuration uh, and deployment experience. So until the next time, take care.